Australia. And welcome to another episode of Life Support. My name's Sigourney, and I'm here to show you modern women how some handicrafts and the right attitude can improve the lives of those around you. I'm Dr. Rudy. I'm here to help you with more important medical advice and more fundamental financial wisdom. You wouldn't want to miss that. And I'm Penny. I've got my finger on the pulse trying to find a vein in the arm of street culture in Australia today. If it's out there, I'll be bringing it in here. And I'm Todd. I'm good with tools. It's wonderful to have your company. We've got a terrific show lined up for you tonight. That's right. I'll be showing you how to mix some mad music. And if you starve for the muse, where to find your inspiration. And I'll be giving you little blokes a couple of tips on how to be the big man with the ladies. And I'll be showing you how potatoes can be more than just a good source of carbohydrates. So, stay tuned. Because you don't want to miss a thing. It's always worth going to a lot of trouble for your dinner guests. Remember that a table setting can say so much about just what kind of woman you are. One of my favourite films of all time is Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and it's a very fitting movie to mention because of what I had planned today. A few weeks ago, I went to a dinner party and met an amazing gentleman who was part of the Stolen Generation. He had a lot to say about a lot of things, but what we discussed most was the need for more recognition of Aboriginal culture, especially their artwork. And, as an artist myself, I couldn't agree more. We've all seen the fabulous works of Clifford Possum, Emily Nwari and Nata Nungrai. But how many times have you said to yourself, I can do that? Well, today I'm going to teach you how. As any artist will tell you, your surroundings are very important. So find somewhere nice to work. I prefer to work with a mounted canvas for that authentic fine art look. But if you can't get your hands on any, tree bark should do. As usual, I'm working with acrylic paints and I'm going to be using four colours. Mission Brown, Colonial Red, Sunshine Yellow and of course, Brilliant White. Then, all you need for tools is a basic chopstick. Of course, I'm using Japanese, but you can use anything you might have. Then, after you've painted your canvas with a base colour, you can add the dots. There you have it. Personally, I can't tell the difference. Can you? And now for the final touches, your signature. In the tradition of Aboriginal artists, I found out my Aboriginal name. And you can too. Just log on to www.indigenousisme.org.au and type in your name. It's as simple as that. Of course, if you're looking for a painting to complement your current decor, I finished these earlier today. See, it works every time. A good one needs plenty of time in a good cellar, but a good cellar takes patience, foresight and plenty of money. For those of us who can appreciate a good red, the rewards really can be worth it. For instance, this wine was made in 1986 and just like girls born in that year, it's becoming very attractive right now, but will be more palatable when fully developed. So, how do you stop yourself from drinking your wine while it's developing its earthy, complex flavours? Well, all you need is a microgram of an enriched plutonium isotope readily available from your nearest nuclear facility. I've put it in a heavy water solution in this test tube. Then I simply inject it through the cork into my wine. <sighs> Plutonium isotope has a radioactive half-life of five years, which means if you drink it before then, you'll die a painful death. After that though, it just adds a nice tang to the back palate. Your health. For me, there is nothing cooler than music, except maybe being a musician. But seriously, who's got the time to learn how to play an instrument? Well, nowadays, you don't have to. 
These days, remixing is where it's at, and if you crack it like Fatboy here, it's a great earner. But thanks to organisations like Napster, it's getting harder to find copyright-free material to remix. Like most things, you've just got to know where to look. So go to the scene of your nearest plane crash and grab yourself one of these. A black box flight recorder. This is bound to have some high energy dramatic sounds on it. Perfect for remix. And by the looks of this site, copyright free. Now all you need to do is get the computer to generate a couple of wicked drum beats for you. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We're cruising at about 35,000 feet this afternoon. Boring. Cars is fine. And for you captain, coffee, tea, me. Coffee, thanks. More boring. There you go, the instant classic, pull it up, we're going down. That groove of what's that beeping sound make? <laughs> and the haunting single, Gemma, I love you. Gemma, I love you. There you have it, 12 thumping tracks of fat dance beats and final moment shrieks that'll have you dancing till dawn, halfway between the tarmac and the stars. A great DIY idea that's guaranteed to get any party off the ground. They reckon acupuncture is a great remedy for pain, but you end up paying a lot of money for a few pricks. Here's a way you can get the same effect. Say you've got a pain in your lower leg. Simply get a wooden spoon and put it behind your knee. Then fold your leg under you and wait. After about five minutes, bingo, pins and needles. I can't feel my leg anymore. The pain's all gone. After 3,000 years of traditional medicine, looks like the Chinese were onto something after all. Oh. Don't you hate it when it's Sunday morning and all you want to do is relax with a cup of coffee and a copy of the social papers, only to discover this. And if you're like me, you wouldn't be seen dead leaving the house until you've done your hair and put your face on. But don't worry, there is a way for you to visit the corner store without doing that morning beauty ritual. Just throw a veil over your Sunday worst and you can shop without feeling like you're being scrutinised. I don't know about a veil, but I've worn a poncho and that felt pretty good. Sheets are a lot easier to dress up in. When you wake up in the morning, you don't have to decide what to wear. Didn't Madonna do a big Catholic thing a while ago and she was wearing veils and all of a sudden a lot of women were wearing veils, lace veils? As long as it doesn't have any sort of religious connotations behind it, I wouldn't have a problem with wearing a scarf on my head. I've put it on for six months and I took it off, but I am going to put it back on because it's in our religion. They think that if you wear a scarf, men's not going to look at you. That's bullshit. We know One some of... people that wear, wear yeah. it and we see the real, so the real inside of them and that's what, they're just like normal people. 
controversial hint there, Sigourney. Thanks, Penny. Here, I got you a Shador. Given your ongoing run of bad hair days, you really should consider wearing it. Thanks, but Perda really isn't my thing. Are you sure? This Perda's by Prada. Then I'll definitely pass. All right then, but you know where it is when you change your mind. Anyway, isn't it time for us to ask viewers to write letters and send emails asking us for advice? That's right, Penny. It certainly is. If you're a regular life support viewer, you'd know that we're here to help you, the average, that make up average Australians. And the only way that we can do that is if you write and tell us exactly what you need help with. So send your letters to Life Support. Locked bag 028. Crow's Nest. 1585. But right now, it's time to take a tip from the tutor of the tools, Todd. Guys, isn't it true that one of the biggest complaints from women is that we're not very good at foreplay? It's especially a problem with young men who happen to make up a large proportion of our viewers. So today, Todd talks foreplay in a language that all blokes, young and old, will understand. Battleships. Imagine this as your typical woman. Now to show you where a woman's erogenous zones are, I've drawn up this battleship grid. Erogenous zone number one is a D6. Erogenous zone number two is a D2. And last but not least, erogenous zone number three is a J4. The first thing to do is to play with D6 and D2. Now, women prefer a circular motion, so imagine your finger is a battleship and what you're doing is manoeuvring around the area like you're on surveillance for escaped prisoners. Circle for about two minutes on each area, then take the ship south. Not like you're chasing an enemy though, just nice and slow like you're on a supply mission. Now you should arrive within good time at J4, which is at the bottom of Tasmania. This is kind of like arriving at base camp. Do a few circular laps to look for a good place to park the ship, then after about a minute, give it some up and down movement Kind of like you're doing a reverse park in a real tight spot. Unless you're a pansy who can't reverse park, you should be in within 30 seconds. So that's it. You've worked long and hard and now it's time to sink the battleship. Just remember, women like a man who's good with his hands. So turn on to Todd's tips and see if it floats a boat. Let me know how you get on. You should ask some of the gay girls why they are gay. It's because the men can't do what they want them to do and that's why they've got a female relationship. Most guys don't know where it is though. They just want to get and overdone with. They just worry about themselves too much, their own pleasure. They don't care about us. I think they've got to learn to use toys, learn to um, handle a woman's body in the right way. <laughs> to last a bit longer than two minutes. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Money, yeah. So it doesn't come down to the foreplay, it doesn't come down to the sex, it comes down to what you can give them and how good you can make them feel about themselves. I reckon in general, trying to teach a man anything is just pointless. <sighs> can you believe it? They don't want to buy this. Brand new 68 centimetre remote control, everything in perfect nick. I tell you, it's getting harder to know what's good to steal these days. So, how do you know what pawn shops will buy? Here's a tip. If you're gonna rob a joint, rob a pawn shop. When Governor Davy wanted to communicate with the noble savages of Australia in 1816, he used pictures, not words. This type of communication is part of Australia's proud history and is still used today in airports, shopping centres and of course the recent best ever Olympic Games. That's right Dr Rudy. I think we all know what this means. Now when you invite your new Australian neighbours over for dinner, don't let their poor language skills affect you. Just use these kinds of signs in your own home. After you've stuck a few helpful signs around the house, it's time to make your guests individual signs for use at the table. 
and with a bit of awareness and cultural sensitivity, you can turn your dinner party into a triumph that will make you the envy of your multicultural neighborhood. Me heap big medicine men. Okay, the thing is, I hate nightclub door bitches and I hate having to pay money to get in. So I don't. And you don't have to either. Here's what you do. Have you got a second? Yeah. It's good to bring along a friend who's good with this sort of thing. Hey Sigourney. Hi Penny. Tonight we're going to show you how to make your own nightclub stamps. All you need is a good craft table, a paring knife, a range of colours of ink, the wrist of someone that's already been in, and last but not least, a potato. The best type of potato to use is the purple Congo. They're firm but not too starchy so the ink absorbs well. But they are a little more expensive so the King Edward or Pontiac are good substitutes. Okay, it's a word. Now the trick with words is to copy them backwards. Your paring knife has to be sharp like this one. <laughs> All done. <laughs> All right, Penny, now give me your wrist. See? Looks just like the real thing. Thanks, Sigourney, you're a doll. Have a nice time. <laughs> there you go. I skipped the haggle with the door bitch, the $10 cover charge, and I got a date who can buy me drinks. All for the price of a spud. <laughs> See ya. More invaluable advice for young Australians. And my goodness, Sigourney, it's wonderful to see that you and young Penny have so many activities that you can enjoy together. Oh, Dr. Rooney, I'm so pleased she's taken an interest in handicrafts. It just makes her so much more well-rounded as a young woman. Especially if you taught her how to cook the potato as well. Speaking of cooking, in amongst our hundreds of viewers' letters and emails this week, we had this one regarding Todd's cooking segment. Yes, you know, Sigourney, since Luff supports a bit on the television, our Todd has received a great deal of support from viewers regarding his cooking segment. That's right, but unfortunately this isn't one of them. This email reads, Todd, I'm tired of seeing people on television like yourself teach us the same tired old recipes. Could you please show us how to make some meals like the ones we get in the country's top restaurants? Signed, Leo Sablajek. Well, Leo, Laugh Support is here for you. So tonight, Todd is going to rise to the challenge and is heading into the kitchen to teach you some fabulous restaurant fare. One of the top things about living in this lucky country of ours is that we're spoilt for choices when it comes to restaurant cuisine. But for my money, nothing beats the classics. So when I'm talking restaurant food, I'm talking French. Now, the French love nothing more than a rich sauce, so let's start there. All you need is some mayo, this stuff, which is a herb called dill, and some Dijon mustard, that's French. Mix a couple of teaspoons of each of these together and let it infuse. Sound like we're in a restaurant now, Leah? You see how I'm finally chopping this lettuce? Well, we in the restaurant game call that a chiffonade. That's French too. And for a bit of bite, I'm gonna add a couple of these tiny onions. They're called echelots. They're French too. And a couple of these little guys, which is called the cornichon, which is basically a French pickle. And finally, you need to get yourself some A-grade beef. This is 100-day grain-fed high fillet. And it's worth about $30 a kilo. So let's put it through the mincer. Now, food is about aesthetics as well as taste. So why not form your meat into attractive shapes? I've decided to shape these into discs. Then sear these in a smoking skillet for about three minutes on each side. 
While they're cooking, let's prepare some cheese. Now you don't want to overpower the dish with a cheese that's too mature. So I've chosen Port Salut, French again. And we call this shaved cheese. Now, we can put this baby together and serve it with a brioche. That's a French bread roll. And there you have it. Two all beef seared discs, dill and Dijon mustard sauce, a chiffonade of greens, shaved cheese, cornichon and echelots on a sesame seed brioche. Would a dish by any other name smell as sweet? Now that's a pretty well rounded meal in itself, but sometimes as a special treat, I like to serve it with a bowl of pommes frites. That's French for fries. So there you have it, Leo. A recipe from one of the country's favourite restaurants. Of course, being a restaurant recipe, it does cost a lot more. But that's the thing with restaurant recipes. It's always more expensive when you're cooking with fresh verbs. Bon appétit. Don't you hate it when you go to the toilet to shoot up and management have installed blue lighting? <laughs> well, don't let the man keep you from your height. Just come back out into a normal lighting situation and use a black texture to draw a line on either side of your vein. That way, when you're back in the blue lighting, you'll be able to track down your track marks knowing you'll bleed between the lines. Well, here we are at the end of another episode. Yes, the end of our third show. As good a reason as any to boil bagels. Delicious. Yeah, they turned out all right. Thanks, Todd. And thanks for the recipe, mate. Now, make sure you join us next week when I'll be showing you how to cure a time-consuming affliction in half the time. I'll be continuing to educate you on how to get more money into your lifestyle. Believe me, sometimes it's good to be in the black. And I'll be taking a look at how some crafty craft can convert into copious cash for you. Until then, try to eat a balanced diet and get some exercise in. And keep sending in those letters because we love reading about your problems. Good night, Australia. Australia.